So I got more armor hounds sold here today, and this is just another example of why I dislike this deck so much. But first, all right, so this is a pretty important thing, right? What do you mulligan first here, right? I have two commandos still up in the deck. And I only want one Caesar port uh, in my hand. This is relatively simple mulliganing, but still important to cover. So of course, or not of course, but you would take the, you would hit the commando first and blacklist that with the risk that you draw into a third support. But drawing to a third support is not that bad. It's not as bad as drawing into, say, a second commando. So you would hit the commando first since it's pulled out with other cards, and then you would hit the second support because it's pulled out with Henselt. And then you would mulligan other things like Roach, if I have it in this hand. I didn't really need to check the rest of the cards in my hand because I knew that's how I wanted to mulligan, both because uh, of a general understanding of the deck and because of just playing it a bunch. Uh, so towards the uh, latter end of this game is where you'll see like exactly what I'm talking about when I say I don't really like this deck. But until then, we're going to see how we got there. All right. I may even just speed this up a little bit. So I'm going to start off, of course, with the, the key combo. And then, uh, you know, I've actually gone up against Radovid a couple of times in this past couple of days. And I'm actually finding that, like, wow, Radovid is a pretty good counter against... Uh, against armor Henselt because he can just lock up two of your whenever you pull out three of your siege supports he can just automatically lock two of them and he doesn't have to pass the round or you know tiptoe around that round or anything like that so he's just gonna wait for me to play my Henselt of course I play my Henselt right next to my siege support so I can get that double crewman and then put the other two on another row uh, there's some I actually could have done this differently knowing he was going to lock my units and place my units in such the way, and place my units in such a way that I still get double crewmen, maybe. But I don't think it was really worth the effort because at the end of the, like, whenever he does do is, uh... so what I could have done is I could have put Henselt in between all four of them, put Henselt in between all four of them. This is where it'd be useful to have my EpiPen, uh, not EpiPen, <laughs> my Epic Pen, and draw, but I don't have it right now. So you put Henselt here, you put the two seat supports right here, he locks two of these seat supports, and I still have a double crewman, or he locks one seat support, and then he locks this seat support, and then I lose double crewman. So no, it doesn't really matter, I guess. It doesn't really matter where I place it. He's still gonna he's gonna he's gonna make it so I don't get double crewman no matter where I am. Not that the double crewman matters particularly in this particular deck, uh specifically in this particular deck. But in general, it's something to think about in future archetypes where you are using that crewman to some benefit. I'm going to play Trouble Low next so I can get that armor going. And then next turn, I want to try and play either Stennis so I can get the other commando out of the deck. Or I'm going to play <clears throat> either the uh, Poor Flanking Infantry or the uh, Ram. Now, this is a good example of breaking up your hand into parts. So as you see, uh, I, I'm not going to play Mergo Tailstorm. I am not going to play Dijkstra. I'm not going to play Shawnee. I'm probably not going to play Kira. And I'm probably not going to play Life Coach. So that, le le that leaves me with Stennis, Poor Flanking Infantry, and Battering Ram. That, you can look at this whole hand and you think, oh, I'm going to... No, I don't want to play this. I kind of want to play this. I kind of want to play that. I don't want to play that. I kind of want to play that. But you can just break it up into play, play. Not or not play, 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 not play, play, not play, not play, not play. Even though some of these are varying degrees of not play and varying degrees of play, you can break your hand up to more manageable bites, especially when you have a big hand like this. <clears throat> and then you can break it up even further. Like, okay, so if I need to get armor, I use uh, Kira or whatever her name is. Um, if I really need a huge tempo swing, then I go with Dijkstra. If I really need to eat something, then I go with that. If I really need to cut down a row, then I go with that. And until those conditions are met, you don't even think about those cards. Because it's not necessary. Because you know that that's not when you want to use them. Or you know you don't want to use them until that condition is met. Or until you absolutely have to. Which doesn't really happen uh, in round one. And then you can, uh, after you do that, you have three options. And then you weigh the pros and cons of each option. And really, all three of these options are quite nice. But since he played this uh, retaining an elite or elect, whatever it is. I'm going to probably play my... Ram and try and hit that armor off of it. At least I, I'm, that's what I should do. Yeah, okay. 
So now he doesn't get any more buffs. And I'm getting to the point where I have a little bit too much tempo. So now I'm contemplating playing Life Coach and you get using the Akimara. But I'm willing to go one card down to win this round uh, because winning round one as Armor Hunt is very important. And I make sure to, now I played Stennis because the round's about to end, and I want to make sure to get that commando out of my hand. Now I have way too much time for him to keep up with, so I can. He's probably going to pass, and then I can pass. I go one card down, but that's perfectly fine, especially since I went first. Or rather, it's not saying, oh yeah, it's better because I went first. It's well, I went first, so I had to make some concessions. And he plays a spy, which was uh, not um, not great. Um, this is kind of the situation that I actually mentioned in uh, in this like article thing that I'm writing. You don't really want to play a spy in that kind of situation because it's effectively useless. You're not really gaining any particular advantage. You're just cycling that card out of your deck, which is not good enough. Even still, I might have if I had a spy in my hand, I might have played my own spy, but maybe not. And going to this round, I believe there's no reason for me to play anything, so I'm just going to pass, I think. Yes, yes. I have the advantage of having uh, Shani into Troll of Lol, Shani into Stennis, I have Dijkstra, I have some good control, I have Miracle Tailstorm. There's really not that much reason for me to uh, try and bleed him out this round. I can just go into the next round, take the card advantage, and take the uh, last card advantage, or the last say advantage. And it's kind of like all of my cards that are in my hand are pretty useful. So, uh... Any card that I do play, like let's say I play three cards and he plays three cards. One, yeah. Let's let's say he plays three cards and I play three cards. Is that better than him than I playing no cards and him playing one card? Is do I have three cards that are significantly less value than what he could possibly play? Probably not. In certain situations, even if you do want a somewhat of a longer third round. You might want to play, you want to coal your hand, get rid of some of the bad cards, but I don't really have any bad cards in my hand, so I'm just going to keep going. Any Like, if I play a, a higher than average kind of play, which is what my hand more or less consists of, then he can just play a lower than average play, or a lower value than average play, and then still win the round, and I basically get no card advantage instead of one guaranteed card advantage. So this is the play that sets up why I dislike this deck so much. I might have... This is kind of like a thing, right? Maybe you pick Stennis, but I feel like maybe Charlo Lowe was the right option. In hindsight, it was a poor option because I'm going up against Radovid Northern Realms. I didn't I wasn't actually sure if he was playing armor, the armor archetype. So it actually I think maybe he's playing a is he playing a, a counter? Because he didn't play any armor cards. And he hasn't played like Shani or anything like that, but he still had three Dun Banner heavy cavalries. Why did he have that except to counter? That's really interesting. Wow. He has Radovid to shut down the siege supports. And then he has the heavy cavalry to shut down troll lulls or Stannis's. Wow. That, is he just playing a direct counter? Or maybe it's just coincidence. But anyway. Uh, so there's something to be said about going Stannis versus troll lull. I go for troll lull. In hindsight, I probably should have gone for Stannis. And you'll see why. Or maybe even going for a siege support is not bad either. Yeah, but I don't know. St Stannis is probably better. Also, part of the problem is I wasn't really sure if I wanted to go for Stennis because I wasn't sure what was still left in my deck. I don't like count it, you know, especially in these casual matches or whatever. And I don't have my deck tracker up right now. <clears throat> so I get the troll a little out. I've got myself set up to actually I don't have myself set up to take advantage of that. That's kind of sad. I don't have a single heavy cavalry in my hand. So even if I did play Stennis... It would come out, it would have 5 armor, it would hit the 5 armor on Stennis, and then it would have 5 armor itself, and then that's not, I don't know, that didn't seem very good. Maybe that would have lost me the game if I had done Stennis. Possibly. I make a bit of a general mistake here. Um, so, I go ahead and play Witcher on and hit this uh, drummer. 
So uh, what I'm thinking is, okay, so I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, roughly eight turns of value, right? Eight plus seven is 15. Yeah. So I see this as a 15 strength uh, bronze card that I can get rid of immediately, um, which would be nice, but it, I probably should have saved it for something else in general, just in general. I don't think the drummer is a good enough target to hit with the Witcher, even if it is effectively like a 15 strength unit. Like if he had played a rivaling troll or something, it would have been probably better to hit that. So he hits off on his first heavy cavalry. This is what I hate. He used my troll lull against me. So he deeksters immediately into his heavy cavalry, hits it, takes off all of its armor, gains all of those points. Uh, and then he basically Nanekis nothing. I don't know why he has Naneki in this deck. That doesn't really make much sense to me. Or Neneke, whatever it is. It makes sense for something like Witcher and like reinforcement because then you can pull all of them up. Uh, uh, all of them out once again but or maybe he does have the witchers i don't remember you wouldn't play nenike without the witchers right or you wouldn't play nenike without like uh reavers or something like that but reavers isn't really a thing right now strangely enough reavers used to be such a huge deck i'm playing redeeming elite because it doesn't really matter what i play right now i have nothing i want to hit with uh the battering ram i have nothing i want to life coach i'm not uh Dijkstra is still a little bit too early uh, Kira is getting a little bit up there in priority. First light I want to save just in case he has third weather. Miracle Tail Storm, of course, I want to wait until the very end. So something I, I do a little bit unusual here later. Okay, I don't do it yet. So right now I want to try and get more armor on the Redanian Elite and on Trollolo because those will both be armors that I hope to try and strip away. And by hitting them with armor now, I just increase what I get later. Okay, is this where I do the unusual play? Yeah, there was a lot of decision making going into this. Even though there's not a whole lot for me to think about, I'm just thinking about like how do I best uh, go. Oh yeah, there was one big consideration. I was thinking, uh, okay, so at the end of the game, am I going am I going to be marigold hail uh, marigold hailstorming the melee row because these are going to be probably boosted up. Or am I going to be hitting the Siege Row? So, and I don't want to lose value on that card. So I'm thinking, do I use the Battering Ram to hit the, the back row? Or do I use it to hit this row? If I hit this row, I'm not getting any immediate value. I'm just hitting armor on these guys. But I make it less incentivized to hit this, which means I would most likely want to hit the Siege Row. But if I hit the Siege Row, I'm just making my Miracle Tail down worse, while also not decentivizing hitting these and boosting these up. So it's kind of like, there's more nuance to it than, than what I just said. But it's kind of... There's a lot of different things I was thinking about. So I just go ahead and hit NK. I don't want to try and reveal too much of uh, information. If I try and hit this, then I think that kind of gives it away that I have a Marigold Tailstorm in my hand. Also, uh, yeah, that's just it. It, it kind of says like, oh, you're not touching the Seedro, huh? You probably want to hit that with your Hailstorm. But then again, maybe it's like, well, of course you'd hit the NK because you don't want to hit any of the armor. But then again, uh, I don't know. It w just to go over why I was saying I want to decentivize hitting one of these. So if you strip the armor off this right, it gets a, you you transfer the armor over to the heavy cavalry, and it uh, once it loses its armor, it gets boosted up to ten or whatever, right? So if I hit this with three, that means he would only get one armor going back to him, which is not as good. So you'd only you would either not hit him or hit him for less. So by hitting it with three, I'm essentially hitting the future cavalry of three, right? This would be a lot more effective if there was only one of these elites because he can still pick the other one. He doesn't need to pick the, the one that was hit. And he's going to Thunderbolt Point. He's doing the same thing, by the way, where you boost up the armor of these so that when he eventually does strip it of its armor, he gets more. It's essentially like boosting his heavy cavalry, heavy cavalry in the future. Okay, so this guy's called Dora, Dora Gunnery. Dory Gary. So by this point, I, fi I figure he doesn't have his 
it doesn't have a gold weather. And I go ahead and hit this. Okay, so the, <laughs> so this is like I guess maybe mistake number two that I made. I should have hit Troll Lull because Troll Lull uh, is at a pretty good armor total. Also, he's he's about to get ignied, or he may be about to be ignied. So it would have been better just to hit the armor off him now while I still got it. I went ahead and went for the Redania Elite because I got greedy. I took the Redania Elite because I wanted to try and pull another Heavy Cavalry through Dijkstra and then hit the Troll Lull that has something like, you know, four more armor or whatever it is, right? But instead, I go for the Redania Elite now because I got greedy. Also, I lined myself up for Nasty uh, Igni here. Thankfully, he doesn't have it, though. So he's Shawnee's and he's Shawnee's into his freaking Reaver Scout, which hits his Heavy Cavalry. Because, see, if I had done Troll Lull, then Troll Lull has, like, zero armor, right? And then all the armor that's left on my side is on my own Redanian Elite. He's not going to hit my Redanian Elite because he doesn't want to boost that. He would have to hit his own, right? Although... Wait, he hits his own, and then he hits Troll Lull later. Yeah, that's right. That's how it goes. So he hits his own first. All the so okay. So this is the opportunity. Like oh, okay, good. He didn't hit Troll Lull, even though he should have. Uh, yeah, he definitely hundred percent should have hit Troll Lull. I don't know why he didn't. That was really weird. But anyway, so I take this up my uh, my opportunity to not get punished or to reverse the punishment or whatever to take my opportunity to punish him for not punishing me. Is what I mean. Play Dixra. And then I get poor flanking victory. That's okay. We still have a cavalry in the deck. I don't get the cavalry. I get a battering ram instead. So I can't even take the armor off my uh, my troll a little. This is kind of like maybe I should be running a reaver scout in this deck. I take out a battering ram. No, no. Take out a poor flanking infantry and then putting uh putting in a reaver scout. That way you can more reliably take out these done uh, uh heavy cavalrys. And now he's going to play another Heavy Calorie of his own and take the armor off of my troll lol. He draws it with freaking Stennis. And this is where I was like, okay, I don't even want to deal with this. You saw that, right? I I hovered over that uh, that freaking surrender button. That was so mad. He didn't play the... He didn't play his... Uh, actually, he still should have hit the Heavy Calorie on the troll lol. But anyway... Uh, so he freaking Stennis is into his his freaking heavy gun. And I'm like, oh my, you gotta be kidding. He's gonna take the armor off of my freaking troll a little again. And I'm like, oh man, I'm done with this game. This, I hate this deck. I don't want to play this deck anymore. I hate this game. Uh, and I'm like, you know what? I'll stick it out. I still have a Marigold Tailstorm. It might be enough to save the day. Uh, my last two cards are pretty awful. Oh my gosh, it's so annoying. He didn't even like, he played like a total of two... Uh, not counting Stennis, he played a total, or not counting Stennis or uh, Shani, he played two armor cards in the Retanian uh, Elites. And he was, and like, and he runs three heavy calories. It's so annoying. So he got me. He got me really, really good. Ah. Uh. I just play Kamara for whatever sake. Uh, it probably would have been better to use the um, the damage by three. Because that would be nine instead of six. Actually, I don't know why. Why did I do... Why did I use the Kamara? I guess I was just tilted. I should have used the, uh, the Raptor thing instead. That would have given me three more points. Yeah, he uses his Marigold's Hailstorm. And I'm thinking like, oh, do I, did I actually just, am I actually going to steal this away? <laughs> yes, I am. I win by a single point. And actually it would have been more points if I had not hit NK earlier. It would have been like, what, one, one or two more points. And if I had used uh, the proper beast, I would have gotten a couple more points. So I could, this could have been 80 to 85, but I, you know, I have a flair for the dramatics. <laughs> Oh, such a stupidly close, such a stupidly frustrating close game. And it's just like, this is exactly why I hate playing this deck because of stuff like that. I was able to win. Like That's the thing. I recognize this deck has a good win rate and, can, uh, and it is probably worthy of tier one. It has so much raw power. But the fact that like you can be punished so hard for just playing out your own game plan and having it used against you like that, it is the worst feeling in this game. I think... 
I had the most begrudging uh, playing experience with Armor and Self than I've ever had in this game besides for pre-close beta, which is filled with all kinds of garbage. Like, uh, if you'll remember the um, the promote days and, like, uh, Hensel used to promote, uh, like, seven units all at once. That was crazy. I hated those. Or, like, when Weather used to uh, make an entire row down to one. <laughs> oh, those days sucked. I'm getting a very similar feeling here. Anyway, that's Armor and Self. I have proof this time of why I hate playing this deck. Thanks for watching. <laughs>